Ginger. <laughs> hey, Ginger. Good to see you on a live session. I'm glad you made it. <laughs> Amazing to see you. Awesome. Okay, beautiful being. So did you guys see my message of where I would love to take this in the beginning of this session? Did any of you see it? Did you not? Where are we at? We saw the message. So um, obviously we know in the U.S. there have been some pretty intense hurricanes happening in Florida and North Carolina. There's been a lot of chaos on the planet. I mean, it's consistently for quite some time now. However, it just what I've been noticing in different communities and different groups is just people really like going through a bit of chaos, a bit of upheavals in their own lives. And something that I believe in so wholeheartedly is exactly what I posted today, if you saw it, but something I know at the core of my being, and I'm sure so many of you know this as well, is that when we come together, we are exponentially powerful to make shifts on this planet on a big scale. We are so incredibly powerful as we come together and we have a focused intent that we meditate on to together, we can make a difference. And something that I've seen, I'm just letting people in, by the way, too, if you see me going back and forth, that's, that's what I'm doing right now for a few minutes. But something that I've seen is a couple things, and I'm just curious how everyone is, because just because there's a lot of people that I've seen in the communities going through a bit of chaos, a bit of shifts, a bit of upheavals in their own lives, feeling a little overwhelmed by what's going on in the world, doesn't mean that has to be the case for you. Some of you might be riding high. Some of you might be like, I'm good. Like, I feel really good. And I'm not really noticing that in my own life. And that's beautiful. That's the that's like the power of us coming together because that old saying that a rising tide lifts all boats is the case. So it's a beautiful thing when we come together because some of the people who are riding high are going to be lifting the whole energy of the place. Not that it's on them to lift it. No one has to do anything. It's just how we are as we interact with one another. It's also the case when we do healing right? We come into these sessions and something amazing happens as we're watching subconscious freedom work. Obviously, tonight is a little different because we're going to be starting with a group meditation. And I'll explain that in a moment. I'm kind of in the process of explaining that. But something amazing happens even when we watch other people heal through subconscious freedom work. As we watch other people heal, we heal a part of ourselves. And it reminds us of how connected we all are. But to me, it also reminds us of the power we have as well to heal, to shift, to grow together. And it's a big reason why I created this community, this monthly session, this opportunity to gather together. Because I know the power that exists in us coming together with a focus of healing and growth. Amazing things happen. People who I don't even work with one-on-one -on -one can step away and feel free of something that they've had carried with them their whole lives. That's amazing, isn't it? That's special. But that's because we can all help one another heal beyond what many people talk about. And we're meant to help one another. We're meant to come together. And something that I really want to do tonight is for the people that I've noticed going through a bit of there's, I don't want to spend a long time here because it's not what the focus is tonight. And I know that just being in a space like this is so protected and so safe. But I did get a lot of messages about people confused about things like psychic attacks. Have you guys heard of that before? If not, just don't worry about it. Just place it out of your mind. But people were feeling things like, like that on a more metaphysical level. Then other people were feeling just confused and a little bit of chaotic in the world. And something that happens when we come together and we focus on healing together and we focus on shifting together, oh my gosh, we become like a lighthouse. And we're all around the world. We become like a global grid of consciousness that lifts. When we're about to meditate together, 
you in your corner of the planet and maybe we can write it in here where are you guys from write it write it in um write it in the chat where you guys are from because as we're doing this we are connecting in all these different areas on the planet and we are like lighting up a global grid and lifting the consciousness of this planet as we meditate together it's incredibly powerful so I know, and I'm going to read this in a moment, Winter Haven, wow, amazing. We're all over the world. I'm in Germany as well right now, too. So we have uh, Santa Fe Bay Area. We have, uh, or San Francisco Bay Area, not Santa Fe, I'm assuming San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah, San Francisco. Awesome, Patty. Uh, we have California. We have Norway. We have Quebec, Canada, Canada, Portland, Oregon. We have Boston, Germany, England, Berlin, Germany um new york we have philadelphia another canada we have washington state oh my gosh we have winter haven florida texas austria hi monica we have seattle we have california we have a europe we have from europe but in south korea jennifer is calling in from south korea we have chicago we have florida we have another canada we're all over the world right now we're gonna light up the global grid of consciousness tonight does that sound good so whose first time is it on here with me? Do we have some first timers? Patty's first time, Ginger. Ginger, you've seen the calls though, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Who's the first time who hasn't even seen a recording, right? Bex, Jules, Jen, amazing, amazing. Panu, nice to meet you. Sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, but nice to meet you. Okay, so normally what we do on these calls is Susan, amazing. So normally what we do on these calls is I work with as many people live as possible. Sometimes it's two to four people and we really do these subconscious freedom sessions. And something I invite the whole group to is to invite everyone to consider themselves as I'm working with people. To jot down these different questions, to start considering our own lives and a lot of these subconscious identities, which is the work I'm doing, people were revealing the limiting subconscious identities, limiting subconscious stories that we didn't know were there, right? Things we might have picked up from the media, from caregivers, from just ancestral DNA passed down from our caregivers. Those limitations that are creating the world of words, that are creating our experience of reality. What I work with people on is, re is uncovering those and creating profound freedom from them, right? That's what we're doing on a regular basis. However, with what has been happening in the world and some of the chaos that a lot of people are moving through right now, I really think it's important. And that's why I asked the group. Some bunch of people said yes, which I appreciate. But I really think it's important to use this power of a group meditation and send some healing out to the planet. And what we'll also do is create some protection around each and every one of you, some healing around each and every one of you, and then we'll gather together. We'll light up that global grid and we'll send it out to the planet to who needs it the most. We can send it out to areas in Florida, North Carolina. If anyone else wants to send it out to different areas of the planet, type it in the chat and we'll send it to those areas. And um, we'll also just allow the quantum field the universe itself to send it where it's needed the most but if you have a specific area you want us to send it to put it in the chat i know there's a lot going on in the planet um and you're allowed to say i want to send energy here but does that sound good to myanmar is it myanmar can you um unmute and let me know yeah um, problem there um it's myanmar also used to be known as burma that's okay, um, going on as well as like political crisis happening in the last two years so sending good energy there yeah okay lebanon too thank you so much iran absolutely let's send some energy to florida and north carolina as well and iraq palestine let's do it right amazing thank you all so much Thank you for being willing to be a part of this. Thank you for jumping in here and doing this together. I know some of you might not be what you expect, but we will get into some sessions after this, okay? Aaliyah, go ahead. Do you have a question? Go ahead, Aaliyah. I know this isn't a country, but my heart, like, I would really appreciate sending some good energy there today. Your heart? Mm-hmm. 
Oh, beautiful. We will. To each and every heart on here, we will. Okay. Thank you for asking. So something that we're going to do is we're going to create some protective energy around each person. Okay. We're just going to dedicate a protective shield. That's how, that's how powerful you are. When you declare protection, it's there. This is how powerful you are, right? And before we do a group healing work, we're going to make sure we set that protection, which is really important for all of us to do. And anytime we're doing this beautiful work, it's an important piece, the grounding piece of it. So we're going to do that. We're going to send some healing energy to each and every one of your own hearts, right? Then we're going to make that beautiful connection with everyone on here. It's going to amplify everyone's energy field. It's going to create, it's going to be so beautiful. We're all going to connect so much. And then we're going to send it out to these areas that I've uh, written down here. Okay. Sound good to everyone? Then we'll get into a session. We'll get into the normal stuff. Uh, the the normal, I guess it's not so normal. I mean, creating freedom from decades of things that were holding people back. I don't think that's so normal, but our norm inside of this group, right? So is everyone willing to do this with us tonight? It's just like one of those things that, you know, I I get in, I got into this work because I want to, Susan said, first time using Zoom on this laptop, I can't get my camera work to work. Thank you for letting us know. I appreciate that. Thank you for letting us know. So something that obviously I do this work because I care so deeply about just the freedom of all beings on this planet. Like I care so deeply about this planet being the beautiful place I know it can be. And that beings becoming like who they're meant to be, freeing their minds, freeing their hearts. And when I see so much going on in the world, you know, sometimes it's it's like one of those things. I'm curious how everyone here feels, but sometimes it's one of those things that I'm I'm aware we're going through a huge shift in consciousness, right? It's happening on the planet, it's happening happening globally. I've known this was happening since I was little because I just followed ancient traditions and they've been forecasting this. Right? These are the grand cycles of time. So a lot of people talk about climate change. However, since for thousands of years, they've been, they, they, trap, they follow cycles of time and the climate shifts. It goes through cycles. That's not to say that humans don't need to clean things up. We definitely do, right? We definitely need to take responsibility and clean things up. But there's a huge merging of cycles that have been happening um, a peak of all of these important cycles like war, like finances, like climate, like health, all of these big human cycles have been peaking at the same time the past four years and continue to. So there's a lot of ancient civilizations that have prophesied these times, that have prophesied this shift in consciousness that we're in. So I've known about these times were coming for, for, since, for, for many, many years, and I wanted to be a part of preparing people for it freeing people with it, allowing people to be a part of creating their beautiful worlds. However, being aware of it doesn't make it easy to live through. And there are times where it's like, I just like to be just completely authentic with each and every one of you. Is that okay with everyone that I can just share my heart with you in this moment? Like, I just want to like scream and cry sometimes because I just want to be like, how, like, how can I reach more people? Like, how can we shift this like enough? Just like enough of the suffering, enough of the manipulation, just like enough. I want people to wake up to knowing that they can change the weather. Like You know how frustrating it is for me to know that each and every being on this planet can change the freaking weather and see thousands of people like feeling their homes are threatened. It's so frustrating to see these like countries that have been at war for so many years and us know, like knowing that we have the power to come together and to say no more war. There's billions of us and only a few beings who want war. You know what I mean? Like there's billions of us who don't. There's billions of us who want to be free. There's billions of us who want to coexist. So sometimes I just want to freaking scream. That's my authenticity sometimes. And I want to cry and scream because I want to say enough is enough. And on the same time, we're doing amazing. Do you know what I mean? Like in the same breath, we're living through a collective shift in consciousness. These are pivotal times. And there are so many of us who are healing, who are creating our beautiful worlds, who are focused on being the best we can be. In the face of all of that happening, like this is no joke. 
there's so many beings, every single one of you are doing amazing. As much as sometimes you might feel like you might be going bonkers because this world is wild right now, it's okay, go a little bonkers, it's all right. It's crazy right now. And like Ginger said, you're all masters because in the face of all of that, in a world built to keep you asleep, you're, you're up, you're awake, you're alive, you're seeing things. And sometimes it's tough to see things because sometimes there's stuff going on in the world, like political, political issues, like uh, was shared in here, like different things going on in the world that it's tough to see. It really is. And at the same time, we're building the beautiful worlds our hearts know is possible by doing this healing work together. So even though I'm so committed to sharing this work with every one of you, and I want to work with as many people as possible and, and share this information so you can take it into your own lives in whatever way works for you right now, as much as I'm so committed to that, I also know the power we hold when as masters we come together and we set our focus on healing. So I was hoping that everyone would be willing to do that with me tonight, but I know that some of you might not have seen the message I sent last night, but is everyone, I'm going to ask again, is everyone okay with doing a healing meditation first? Everyone on here? Amazing. Okay, awesome. So has every has anyone been feeling the little bit of chaos? Anyone here been feeling it, noticing it? Yeah? Is anyone here like riding high and is like, I understand a lot's going on, but like I'm riding high? Amazing. Jules, let's go. <laughs> Apparently my hand is raised, but I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm sitting in an ashram and like an energy portal on the planet. It's wild. You know, like different energy portals on the planet, which just always makes me very much more connected to the land and connected to the global energies. Um, amazing. Jules is feeling great. Ginger's feeling balanced through it all. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty balanced too. However, like I want to make a difference. I want us to do this together. Right. Amazing. And sometimes I can also want to scream and cry at, at, at not wanting beings to suffer on this planet anymore. Okay, so let's do it. Let's get into it. We are so powerful as we come together and none of you have to know how to do this. Okay. Let me guide the way. You can put down any like need to try. You don't have to try to do this. Deb is here. Welcome in, Deb. Good to see you again. So you can put down any need to try, and I'm just going to guide the way. If you could just allow me to guide the way in this meditation, and we'll go in for about 20 minutes, and it's going to be beautiful. And it's not going to feel August like raise his eyebrows. Five minutes. We'll go in for five minutes. Pretend it's five minutes. That's what it'll feel like. Okay. <laughs> so don't worry about it. It's so different when you're with a group and when you're being guided for something like this, because it's going to be very active. Okay. You're not just going to be sitting in quiet. We're doing beautiful work for yourself and for the whole planet right now. Okay. Amazing. Beautiful. <laughs> August, you're such a trooper. I didn't mean to call you out, but you're such a trooper. Okay. Uh, Patty said, when I meditate, I usually close my eyes and turn video off. You totally can. So right now you guys can totally turn the video off if you want while you're meditating. Um, I invite you to keep it on just because we're all here together. And um, I know a lot of you have committed to turning it on anyway, but I'm going to be the only one who who is opening my eyes sometimes. OK, so you're all good and your faces won't be on the recording when you're meditating. OK, so you don't have to worry about that or anything. Know that this is a safe space and that's going to be the first thing we also do to double down on that protection during these times, too. Right. Awesome. So right now, you can just go ahead and put away any distractions. You can get out any last wiggles. You can just wiggle around, allow yourself to get super comfortable. If you prefer to sit up straight when you meditate, that's beautiful. But you can also just allow yourself to lean back and be really comfortable right now if that's what you prefer. Amazing. A few more moments to just put down any distractions. Awesome. If you haven't already, you can just go ahead and float your eyes closed.
and begin to deepen and soften your breath. Just breathe and soften and relax. Open body, open mind, open heart. Take a moment and give your mind permission to just put down any distractions. Let your mind know it's okay. We can pick back up these thoughts after this. But for now, you have the permission to relax and to follow the soothing sounds of my voice. As you breathe and soften and relax, open body, open mind, open heart. Allow your breath to deepen and soften. Becoming aware of your breath as you gently breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Good. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. And follow this flow of breath as you feel your body relaxing more and more into this moment. Feeling your body soften and surrender into this moment as you simply feel how good it feels to breathe. With your next inhale, begin tuning in to the most beautiful energies all around you. Tuning in to the energies of love, of safety, of gratitude, tuning in to the most beautiful energies all around you and breathe those energies in. As you inhale, focusing on breathing in the most beautiful energies. Good. Now we'll add in an exhale too of releasing any energies that no longer serve your highest good. Your inhale, breathing in the most beautiful energies. Your exhale, a release of any energies that no longer serve your highest good. Letting them go. With your inhale, Imagine that every cell of your body can open up to drink up these beautiful energies. Sending the most beautiful energies into every cell of your body with your inhale and with your exhale a release of any energies that no longer serve the cells of your body. Another cleansing breath like this whenever you're ready. A deep inhale into every cell of your body, the most beautiful energies. With your exhale, a release of any energies that no longer serve the cells of your body. And feel your body relaxing more and more. Becoming more and more still, releasing any tension, becoming more and more soft as you feel how good it feels to breathe with these beautiful energies swirling all around you. And begin to focus your awareness on the center of the center of your heart. Bringing all of your awareness to the center of your sacred heart. Allowing your awareness to take a seat in the safe space of the center of your heart. With your next breath, 
imagine that you can breathe in and out of your heart as if your heart had lungs, focusing the gift of your breath on your heart as you breathe into the heart and out of the heart for a moment. Imagine it. Beautiful. With your awareness in the center of the heart, I want you to tune in to a moment that you felt so at peace. Think of a moment that you felt so at peace. It could have been when you were a little kid. It could be this moment now. It could have been a moment sitting in nature. Begin to tune into a moment in your life when you are so at peace. I want you to turn up the dial on this memory. Make the colors brighter, the sensations stronger. And allow that energy of peace to wash over your entire body now. Allowing this memory to be an access point to generate even more peace in your entire energy field now. Feeling your body melting into that peace, your entire being melting into it. And now I want you to tune into a moment where you recently or a while ago, just tune into a moment where you felt so full of love. It could have been watching a cute video on Instagram. It could have been seeing your pet, seeing your partner, connecting in with the universe. Tune into a moment in your life when you felt so full of love. And I want you to do the same you did with that energy of peace. And I want you to turn up the dial on that memory where you were so full of love. Turn up the dial on it. And allow that love to come alive in every cell of your body now. With your next inhale, breathe that love into every cell of your body. And with your next exhale, fall in love with this moment now. Feel, your, feel yourself falling more and more in love with this moment now. Imagine it. Feel it. Be it. From this energy of love, with your awareness in the center of your heart, noticing it's there again, begin to tune in and become aware of the beautiful souls, the 30 beautiful souls and some watching the recording that are meditating with us together now. Become aware in how conscious and how beautiful it is that all of these beings are agreeing to meditate for the greater good now. That's special. Feel a beautiful connection to these beings. Everyone on this call who is so committed to being the best version of them, feel yourself honoring each and every person on here for a moment for that. Honoring the beautiful beings on here for committing to being the best they can be, for being so willing 
to hop on a meditation for the greater good of others. These are beautiful souls here. Feel yourself honoring the beautiful beings here, meditating now. Thank them in this moment for taking the time to do this. Let them know how beautiful they are for doing this. And now open your heart and allow yourself to receive the thanks being sent your way. Give yourself permission to receive how beautiful it is that you're willing to do this now. That you're committed to being the best you can be. Feel and receive the gratitude for your time now. Allow yourself to receive it. And honor yourself for this moment as well. You deserve it. You've been through a lot. And you deserve to honor yourself. You're a beautiful being. And with this honoring and gratitude flowing in our hearts between one another, I want you to imagine like a web of consciousness. We begin lighting up the global grid of consciousness through the connection of us all. Through the gratitude and love we're sharing, we begin lighting up the global grid of consciousness. And you can feel the connection between each one of us enhancing the connection of us all. With love radiating through that web of consciousness that we're creating. With love and honor and gratitude radiating. and tuning into the energy of healing. You don't have to know how to do this. It's natural, just intend it. Tune into the energy of healing and begin circulating that through this web of consciousness that we've created. You're doing good. And with this energy of healing we're creating, take a moment and allow yourself to receive what you would like to receive in this moment. There is more than enough to go around. Allow yourself to receive this beautiful healing as well. You deserve it. Allow the cells of your body to open up to receive more love more peace, to receive the healing that you'd like to receive right now. You're doing good. And with this connection between us all, feel the healing energies amplifying, the peaceful energies amplifying, the energies of freedom amplifying. The energies of love amplifying. Knowing that these are the energies that can find solutions in any circumstance. These are the energies where infinite creative ideas are born. These are the energies where win-win-wins for all involved are created from. Feel the energy circulating of healing of love, of joy, of solutions, of peace, amplifying in our group together now even more. Imagining that this web of consciousness can surround the entire planet now. See it. See our group's web of consciousness surrounding the entire planet now. See it. Tune into it. Feel it. And with your intention, begin to send a blanket of peace, 
of love, of solutions that are win-win-wins for all. Begin to see it wash over the planet gently, lovingly now. Good. And we'll direct it to some areas now, specifically. Take a deep breath into your heart. Know that you're doing good. And now direct that energy to Myanmar. The energy of solutions, the energy of peace, the energy of progress, freedom, love. Send that energy to Myanmar now. Washing the area over gently, lovingly, with solutions that are win-win-wins for all, including the planet and the animals. Win-win-wins for all. Sent to Myanmar now. Good. And now direct your energies to Lebanon, sending solutions that are win-win-wins for all involved now. Peaceful, loving energy washing over all of Lebanon now. freeing energies sent to Lebanon now. And now for a moment, direct your focus to Iran. You don't have to know where it is, just think of it for a moment. And direct these loving, healing, peaceful energies to Iran now. Solutions that are win-win-wins for all consciousness. That includes the plants, the rocks, the animals. It includes it all. Good. Now direct your energy to Florida, where you can see the remnants of a storm breaking up. Where you see people healthy, Families back in their homes, so happy to be there. Send your energies to Florida now. Loving energies, peaceful energies, healing energies to Florida now. And imagine before your mind's eye, in your imagination, watching a hurricane just completely dissolve away on a map. See it dissolve away. Imagine the miracle of that, that you go on the news and you see that it just dissolved away. Meteorologists have no explanation for it. It just dissolves. Good. Now let's send this loving energies of building and progress and healing to North Carolina that was also impacted recently. Healing, loving energies to North Carolina. You're doing good. Now we're gonna move our awareness to Iraq. May this land know peace. May its beings, animals, and land be free. May they heal. May they know peace. Now. And bringing your energy for a moment to focus on Palestine. May they know peace. May their beings be free. May their land be safe and healed. Good. 
and zoom out again to our global grid of consciousness around the planet we've created, feeling the strength of the connection with us all connected now. And feel that grid lit up with even more love. Because what you give, you receive tenfold. So feel this group lightening up with even more love, even more freedom. Feel the energies of this group amplifying even more with even more love, even more freedom, even more peace. And for another moment, Notice it washing over the planet gently. So all beings, all animals, all plants, all elementals, may they all be free. May they free, be free to be them. May they know peace. May they live happily. May they be free to ascend, to grow, to progress, and to love their lives. Good, you're doing good. Now bring your awareness from that grid of consciousness and zoom it back in and bring it over the area you're in. Just zooming over the town that you're in or the area you're living. And just notice a wave of love, of peace, of healing being sent over the whole area that you're in. Blessing the plants, blessing the animals, blessing the beings. And now zoom in to the household you're in, or the building, or the apartment, or the office. And notice a wave of love, of peace, of healing, of freedom. Wave over and wash over the entire building you're in. And now zoom into the room that you're in. And if you're outside, you can focus on the area around your body. Zoom into the room that you're in and notice it washed over with a wave of love, of freedom, of healing, of peace. And notice it lift the energy of the entire room that you're in, clearing out the energy of the room that you're in, lifting it with love, filling it with peace and harmony. The entire room you're in cleansed. Good. And now zoom in to the area around your body and notice a gentle and loving washing of your entire energy field. Washing it over with love, with peace, with harmony with joy, your entire energy cleansed over. And begin to surround your energy field with a protective shield. You can use a white gold light. You can use a pink light. You can use green. You can use blue. Feel it out. What color feels the most protective for you in this moment? It could be diamonds. It could be silver. Form a protective shield around your entire energy field now so that you may relish in this energy of joy and love and peace and nothing can touch you. You are free. You remember who you are. You remember that you're safe here. You're held here and you are free. And you are love. Good. And take a moment and bring your awareness back to the center of the center of your heart. And allow yourself to be so proud of your efforts. Satisfied with your efforts here today. And with your awareness in your heart, begin to become aware of your body again. And take one more deep breath of beautiful, loving energies into every cell of your body and feel it. 
Good. And feel your body becoming aware again. Feeling all of your energy safely back into your body. Wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes. And if you'd like to ground yourself in this moment, take a deep breath into your feet or the root that you're sitting on. Feeling fully grounded in the you that you are now. Feeling very proud of yourself and satisfied with your efforts of the beautiful work you've done together. And when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. If your camera's off, turn them back on. And come back to this beautiful call with this lovely group of people. Or beings. Amazing. Beautiful. Thank you for saying thank you, Ginger. Amazing. You know, just superheroes changing the world together. No big deal. Regular Thursday night. Amazing. Thank you, everyone. We're powerful together. Could you guys feel the power when we connect together? Are you able to tap into it and feel it? It's amazing what we can do when, we're when we come together. Right? Amazing. So thank you all for your efforts. I really appreciate it. It was definitely a selfish ask of mine, but it's something my own heart needed for us to come together and do this. For us to gather together and make a difference. To remember that we can. Nothing's too big. We can make a difference. We can do this together. There are billions of us who want peace. Billions. And there are a few who have been very powerful for a very long time who don't. And there are a lot who have been very traumatized and confused and don't know any different. And that's okay. They will know. But there are so many more of us that want freedom and peace. And it's important to do like things like this so we remember. Right? We really remember. Amazing. So thank you all. I appreciate that you spent your time doing this. And thank you for the thank yous and thank you for the love. Camilla said, I got a picture of sprouts coming up from the soil, popping up so clearly. That's so amazing. New life being born. That's what's happening on this planet right now. Even though there's a lot of chaos, a lot of things moving, new life is being born. We're doing it together. Not long ago, doing this on a Thursday night might not have been your norm. You know what I mean? 10 years ago, I don't know, some of you might have been awake doing stuff like this. Some of you might not, right? I would say, well, I don't know, 15 years ago, I was drunk on a Thursday night. <laughs> I was not doing this, right? <laughs> but it's shifting. This world is shifting. We all are together. And it's amazing to do. And thank you. Okay, so Leah said, when Sarah said, tune into the people in the group, I literally felt 30 people or so. It's amazing. Yes, there were 30 people on as we were doing this. So amazing. And there's so many more, guys. Like hundreds of people watch this replay and join in and like actually watch. It's special. It's really special. We're all doing it together. There are so many who are going to be so willing to drop into the meditation during the replay. And time doesn't exist it'll feel like they're with us. You know, it's just going to amplify everything we did and do even more and spread it. It's amazing. Okay, so now let us get into our subconscious freedom work. So I'd love for you all to start raising your hands who know the deal. If you don't know the deal and just want to work with me, Camilla's hands are already raised. She's like, let's do this. Um, she knows. She knows what's up. Okay. So you can go ahead and raise your hands. What I do is I do subconscious freedom work. I do. I could either do a quick coaching session. I can answer any questions for anything you're moving through. How to raise my hand. Go to, there's a reaction button on the bottom, Deb. It's a react. Some people have the heart and you can just click the arrow next to that and um, or wait a minute. Sorry. I don't know. Can someone say how to raise your hand? I thought it was. Oh, yes. OK, hit the, hit the heart. Oh, that's yeah. Raise hand and raise hand is there. OK, I'm sorry. I even questioned it. I get that it's confusing. So you can hit the heart and then there's a little raise hand button underneath that. 
okay? Or you can just hold your hand up for a little while and it'll automatically raise your hand, okay? But again, there's a little react button on the bottom of your Zoom and you can raise your hand, okay? All right, so obviously I get through as many people. They do change things up all the time, Metzli. Metzli knows she's in my programs every now and then. I'm like, what happened? Where did everything go? I was just on a call yesterday. What happened? <laughs> okay. So, um, all right. So Deb, you want your hand raised? I can just know that you have your hand raised and we'll do our best, right? Because as always, I do my best to get through as many people as possible. Sometimes things take a little bit longer. Sometimes I'm able to do rapid fire coaching, but I never, ever rush, right? So sometimes it takes the session for one person. But when that happens, I want you guys to think of it like, like how is this related to exactly what you want to heal? right? Because we are so much more connected than we think. And we can take everything that is being guided with these, with all the beautiful souls here and bring them into our own lives in special ways, right? All right. So Camilla was first to first at it. So Camilla, please do unmute. Nice to see you. Uh, good to get back and good to see you. Okay. I, I know this subconscious work from working with you. And so lately, it's <laughs> the series of doors to enter deeper healing with myself from the subconscious. And it's been really serious healing and magical. These doors have been like, I've been, like, you know, from before, I have experienced rape two times in my life and it was now as I am healing versions of me that has been living in the world where she thinks she has been lying about stuff and has been living in this twisted world of being so confused. Sorry, Camilla, I, can you go back a little bit? So you said there's a version of you that thinks that she's been lying about herself. Can you go back a little bit? Yeah. Um, because the first time uh, when I experienced rape, I was 16. Mm -hmm. And it was a really confusing experience because going through that it happened for over a week when I was on holiday with my family in Turkey mm, so and sorry. Um, I felt so much compassion for that man like I it's weird now when I know what I know but I saw him for his divine nature at the time and when I realized what had happened after I came home. It was, it, it's as if something in my brain couldn't understand it. Like something in me couldn't understand how that could happen because it, it's almost as if my brain has shut off when the bad mm -hmm. things happened. Mm -hmm. um, so when I experienced a new, um assault and 10 years later it was the same things coming up again like then it was um it was a, a famous football player that did it at the time so it was a huge case in the media and people were talking like oh she's lying blah blah blah, blah. all the typical stuff that comes up when yeah i'm sorry women, yeah so I have been doing healing with myself for the versions of me that started to believe that I had lied about rape. Mm -hmm. And I was sent down the path of forgiveness and forgiveness for me and also forgiveness for all the people that said those things mm -hmm. um, 
So I know I'm going to jump in one, you are such an incredible being. And I know how much healing you have done on it. I mean, just the way you can even talk about it right now. And obviously, I've gotten to work with you through the mastermind. So I've heard like, incredible that you've gotten to the level of forgiveness and compassion. That's not easy. You know, there might be people on here who might have have experiences and they could be like, how is she getting compassion for them? You know, how could she feel that? And and something I want to highlight is your heart, your huge heart and how much healing you have done. Right. It's really amazing, Camilla. Now, what I want to ask you is what is coming up right now? What feels relevant right now? I want you to focus in so we can really narrow in and support what why is all of this coming up for Camilla? What is what is getting triggered with this right now? So today when I was <laughs> I'm getting emotional. Um because I'm do I had I wanted to do this interview that a journalist contacted me and wanted to do an interview with me around this. And it's the first time that I was able to speak my divine truth in this and be like, you know what? We all do the best from where we are. And this was about some other people in this blah, blah, blah. And it was a part of me that got so scared that she gave up her truth in a way that she that the feelings and emotion that were valid at the time when all of this happened because there were people that did some things that is not okay and that shouldn't be happening and now as I'm doing this it's almost as if it's a war inside of me where that version of me just wants to hold on to to being like how can you forgive how can you how can you let this go and how how do you do this to us almost but the version of me that i am now knows that it's the right thing to do and it's it's what i can do to heal because we have to let go to to move further and it's so many versions of me that's scared to to not be relevant anymore almost it feels like it mm -hmm. feels like this It's even a bit hard to explain, like you were saying, like sometimes I want to cry and scream. And in the woods today, I was running and I was crying and I was screaming because it was so many emotions in me that when I received the interview that they're going to publish, I know that I, I am saying that I understand now why everyone did what they did and how because this second time I was raped the man escaped and it was people helping him to escape and he didn't show up to court and I know that that case might never get be done mm -hmm. it can maybe it will never finish and now I am saying to myself that it's okay also if it's not going to be finished. And mm -hmm. that leap feels... <laughs> My soul, me, now is so happy that I have the courage and strength and love and compassion and understanding to do that. But it's this like versus him that's just like standing there cre screaming and crying like yeah okay so that's what go? you feel like that's what you feel like is happening like the two versions like one version is like I really want to just know that it's okay if the case is never done like you want to let it go you want to move on from this but then there's another version of you just crying and screaming saying like how could you just let this go it isn't okay what happened that version of you that's what's going mm. on. And also like to, to extend the understanding and compassion for, and this is people that's in high power, like they are mm -hmm. 
it's it's one of the most famous people in football all over the world that mm -hmm. did some of the things that he did from where he was at and Like it's it's um it's something inside of me that asks like but why do you always have to be the higher person why do you always have mm -hmm. to be the okay. one to let so go? there's a part of you that's really fighting it and then a part of you that really wants to move on and be free of of the weight of it yeah my conscious me now knows that it's already done mm -hmm. it's already what I desire to do and it's it's okay but it's and is that what you wanted to come with today you wanted to come mm. with this back and forth that you're dealing with right now yeah because I think it goes back to my childhood like yeah always does but I want you to stay focused with me so is that specifically the back and forth what you want to talk about today the part of you that's still yelling and not wanting to let go yeah, but I think that she's yelling because she doesn't really believe that. Yeah, we'll get into we it. We are speaking the truth. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. We're going to get there for a moment, Camilla. I know it's a lot, but is this specifically, it is what you want to talk about today? The version of you that's yelling, that's what you want to feel freedom with and create healing on? Yeah. Okay, amazing. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to give her the attention that she really wants. That's why she's yelling, right? And the the idea that it's coming from childhood and what she's really thinking, she's going to have a chance to speak all of that out. We just had to focus and make sure that we were focused, okay? Is that okay? Mm. All right, thank you. All right, so this version of you that's yelling, what do you think her positive intent is for not wanting to let this go? Why is she yelling? I think she wants to <laughs> make sure that this doesn't happen to more people. Yeah. Like a sense of justice? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We can honor that, right? We can let her know I get that. Right? So we can honor her for that. We get that. Now, do you have full control? This is tough, but important. Does Camilla have full control over whether this person gets away with it or not? What is that? No. No. You can do everything you can, right? However, with this circumstance, does Camilla herself have full control over the outcome? The court system and all of these things? <laughs> no. What does Camilla have control over? What I choose to make this of me. Yeah. And does Camilla want to choose to hold on to the energy of gripping and holding on and, and uh, that energy? Does she want to choose that? Yeah. Why not? Because I know there's a better way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because who would that ultimately hurt if you were holding on to that resentment and anger? And this isn't, we're not saying that we're condoning what happened. It wasn't okay. And it's important that this part of you always knows that. That wasn't okay. However, what would holding on to resentment for it ultimately do? 
who would it ultimately hurt? Yeah. yeah. And that's not fair to do to you, is it? You deserve to be free. Does this part of you want to be free? Yeah. Yeah. Can you let her know? I mean, do you still, I want to ask the, the Camilla now, the conscious mind, do you still want to do what you can in the court case? Or do you want to be done with that too? The me I am now has already let go of that. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Do you mind repeating that? I have already let go of that. That's me okay. now. So your your conscious mind is the you that you are now, you've already let go of that. You don't want to be a part of that, but it's this part of you that's still holding on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, I want to ask you as well, what else is the reason why this part of you is holding on? She doesn't want it to happen to other people, but when we bring it back to Camilla, we just talk through that, but when we bring it back to Camilla, why is she kicking and screaming? I think she's scared that she's not going to be seen anymore, like she's going to be forgotten. Yeah. Okay. Was this a way that she got seen for a while? I think this version of me is all of my versions so I have because it goes back to something had to happen if love was going to be there. I've been so confused my whole life on what love is. Mm -hmm. That's so something like dramatic had to happen for love to be there. Is that it? Yeah. Like it was, it was conditional. So does this part of you think that love will go away if this dramatic situation goes away? Yeah, that's how it feels like that. She wants to cling on to it too. Yeah. And we can have so much compassion for that. If that's what she learned about love, can't we? Right. We can just hold her even in this moment in the energy of knowing it's okay if this is how you thought that love worked, that this is how you would be seen. But can you also let her know simultaneously how this is not the type of being seen that you want? Because is it? Is this the type of way you want to be seen? Is this the type? of attention that you want? No. Now we can have so much compassion for the parts of you that thought that this was the way. They didn't know. But this part of you now does, doesn't it? Yeah. So then if this part of you is running from the idea or, or playing out the idea that love only comes through this dramatic circumstance. You said that you feel like that started when you were little. You were always confused and you thought something had to happen for love to be there. So what is that saying about your relationship to love? What are you saying about love? That it can come and go. That it can come and go. And very specifically, how did Camilla learn it came? Through pain. Through pain. And through drama, right? Now, Camilla, what is a lie about that? The love is, it can't come and go. What is that? That love is, and it can't come and go, it just is. It is. And more specifically, it is you, isn't it? 
Where does love come from? Love is my soul. Mm, beautiful. It's your soul. So if it's you, then can it come and go? Can we have a lot of compassion for the little kid in a tumultuous household who didn't know any better and thought that had, that's how it was? But is that how it is now? Not for me, no. It doesn't have to be anymore. And this part of you is learning this with us right now. So I want this part of you to be with us as I ask you this question. So if you lived in a world, Camilla, where you knew that love could no longer come and go because it is you, you live in a world where you know you are love, and you can share that when you choose, and maybe some people spark that reminder of that and spark new versions of that, and that's beautiful, but they can't take it with them because it is you. So Camilla, if right now that part of you and you were to step into a world where you know you are love, what world becomes available to you? Freedom of freer. Freedom of freer. Amazing. Freedom of fear. What'd you say? That I don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be afraid because you are love. And you are loved. This universe is love. A lot of people were confused about that. But you know it, don't you? Yeah. So how does that part of you that was kicking and screaming about not wanting to let go, how does she feel when she remembers that she is love? And she doesn't have to do anything to be seen and get love. She doesn't have to do that anymore because she is it. So how does she feel when she remembers that? Relieved. Relieved. She can just be her. And from that place, she can experience love and intimacy in the way that she deserves. Beautiful love beautiful intimacy, divine intimacy. Do you think she would like to experience that? Yeah. I think she just needed what? some moments. I think she just needed some moments to tag along because this is the first time I dare to speak from the love that I am without caring to be judged or anything. So, mm -hmm. and from this energy of knowing she is love, can she now begin to trust herself and her own experience even more? <laughs> No matter what the courts say, they don't define her. She defines her. And this is true resolution. It happens just like this. The court doesn't need to do it. You can do it. She can do it with you. Yeah, absolutely. That's. I was looking for answers in so many places that was never gonna be found or reliable. And it was funny because it was always inside my heart. So. Yeah. It's you, you are love. So take a deep breath, breathe that in. Let that version of you come home to your heart in a world where you know you are love and you don't have to do anything for it. So she doesn't have to worry about not being seen in that way anymore because she is love. 
And she knows now that's not the way she even wants to be seen, right? She gets to be seen for the love that she is. She doesn't have to try to be it. She just is it. Beautiful. Amazing, Camilla. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being willing to take such a experience that isn't okay, right? Letting go, and this is important for everyone, and I know you know this, you've come to this on in your own way, Camilla, but letting go of these things, it, it isn't condoning that they're okay. We're not saying they're okay. But what we are doing is freeing our own hearts and souls from the resentment of them coming with us. And also taking these moments and allowing them to help us actually progress our souls. Because that was a horrific experience. But the layers, Camilla, right? The layers of profound freedom that you've brought yourself to, so many layers of it. Now remembering that you are love, all parts of you. To be able to turn, like what Ginger said in the beginning of this, we are masters. This is being a master of your life. And that's what you're doing right now, Camilla, and it's so inspiring. To turn something like that into helping you remember that you are love, that's a masterful being. And I hope that can be really good. Yeah. Feels really, really good too. Yeah. Yeah. To just forgive and let go. Feel it dissolve away. Doesn't have to be <laughs> your story space. anymore. <laughs> yeah. So what are you aware of right now? Go ahead. Let's let's uh into wrap this up in this. So what are you aware of right now? You did great. That I am safe to be me because I am love and to live in my truth means to do it my way, do it from love and compassion and understanding and I know that when I do this it affects me but it also affects the people in a way that maybe can help them to take better choices. And I trust that and I believe that. And yeah, I'm very grateful. Very, very grateful. Thank you so much, Camilla. Please keep us updated about what shifts in your world from the energy of remembering that you're loved. Like, please do keep us updated. You can share in the chat. And thank you so much for sharing your heart with us. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. You're amazing too. <laughs> thank you, Camilla. Really powerful. Amazing. Isn't it so inspiring to see what people do with the circumstances? So powerful. Patty said, a uh, super powerful session. Thank you for your vulnerability. I'm going to apply what I learned to a specific situation in my life. Thank you, Patty. It's exactly it. This is how we help one another heal and grow and create so much freedom. So Jules, please go ahead. Now I do have, I am going to have a hard stop at 11 because they shut off. Right now I'm at um, the ashram that we're having the uh, global All Shift Happily Now event at that I'm running with my colleagues. So I'm in Germany at the ashram. That's why it all looks the way it does. And um, they do have a hard stop at 11 o'clock. They like shut everything off. So I'm letting everyone know that now, but let's keep going. And Jules, please do come on up. It's so good to connect with you. So good to meet you. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, I've seen your stuff for a while and it's nice to, yeah, just like hear you talking and and feel your love during meditation. And mm, I'm just, yeah, feeling lots of 
universal collective power and goodness. So thank, thank you. Thank you, Jules. I felt you on that meditation too. You were such an anchor. So thank you as well. I'm so happy to meet you. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know what's going on with my <laughs> camera. Just in a divine Just noticing light. It. No, no big deal. <laughs> I am. Just like in a beam of light. <laughs> I'm Jules. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. I'll just let it be then. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Do I start this or do you start this? <laughs> Go ahead. Let me I'm know ready. Up. Do you have a question? Do you have something you'd love to focus on? Is there like something going on in your life now that you're like, oh, I really want to get freedom from receive freedom from this. What's going on in Jules world? Yes. I want to say, Camilla, I really resonate with your experience. Um. I've been doing a lot of major healing on remembering and healing from my sexual abuse as a child. Mm -hmm. And it's been a whirlwind and a process. And um, I finally like feel like I was able to kind of get that part of me and bring it to light and see it and feel through it and, and heal it. And now it's like the next step. <laughs> Mm -hmm. which um, for me right now feels like the protector. So, so in response to my own trauma, um, I had this protective part of me that sought comfort and safety through food, which I think a lot of people will understand that have been mm -hmm. through this. And, um, and I'm kind of in this place where I finally feel open and free in a way that I recognize um, it's time to like show up more in my body. <laughs> it's yeah, time it's to be more present um, with that, that part of me that was so protective for so long. Yeah. And I have like a protector of the protector <laughs> who's like, nobody mess with this protective girl. Mm -hmm. she protected me from so much mm -hmm. you have no idea what you're saying when you say messages to me of why I am the way I am or why I look the way I look um so I feel this battle between the protective part of me that sought comfort and safety mm -hmm. and food to be seen and show up in the world as she is and then this extra protector of her <laughs> saying like well be careful because you don't know what you're going to receive from, yeah. from everybody else. And I just want to show up fully in my body. Yeah. You I feel like do. you're like in your body right now. Like you feel like, yes. you are. like I could feel yes. your power, even in the meditation, you felt like such an anchor. So it feels like you're doing amazing work, Jules. I am. I am. And I, I recognize that and I love it. And I also, yeah, it's just fun to see those layering pieces of like mm -hmm. why I know I want to show up more in my body. So what's the, why is there still hesitation? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So there's, so, okay. So you're noticing that like barrier a little bit between like, there's a protector of the protector. So there was yes. one layer that you feel like was willing <laughs> yes. to create, to be in your body more, to like associate once again in your body, to no longer resort to some mechanisms of safety. Um, yes. that you used to resort to. So there's one layer of you did it, but then there's another layer that's like, whoa, 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 no way. Yes. And I, and that was new that I don't know when it was today during this talk at some point, but I was like, oh, there's a protector of my protector. And I hadn't really considered that before. So mm -hmm. that feels brand new to me. And I'm like, that makes sense that I have a hesitation with fully showing up in a space where I feel ready parts mm -hmm. of me feel very ready mm -hmm. and then okay. yeah. so that's what's going on you feel like you want to fully show up like what's yes. going on in your everyday life that you feel like it's you that feels like you really want to get to a next level with healing this how is it impacting you now yeah I feel like um like I started a podcast a while ago I'm comfortable in certain spaces showing up with my voice now um, I'm a songwriter, so I have shown up in my voice a lot, Amazing. uh, but I, 
just recognize like when I go to, because I do this type of work with other people also. Mm -hmm. So when I go to record things with my body in it, that's when I get afraid of like, people may not see me. People may not understand my message. It might be distracting. People might say all sorts of things or thoughts and whoever they are. We, I, I like to call it the ethereal they. We'll have all <laughs> sorts of thoughts about who I am and what I have to offer because of that part of me that protected me as child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a part of you that feels afraid that people will judge or things like this. Yeah. And then like, I can't do the work I want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Or I can't reach, which is, so I'm like saying out loud seems silly. Yeah, that's what because... I was just going to say. Is that true? <laughs> is it true that you're not doing the work you want to do? No, it's not true. No. No. But you know, there's another level. Yes. I know there's yeah. another level of like distrusting maybe um, how I can handle it. Mm -hmm. that the more I do put that out there, the more I do speak about that and the more opinions people might have about it, like just kind of distrusting, like, am I strong enough to handle that? Is that protective part of me strong enough to manage everybody else's opinions beyond yeah. my own truth? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a little bit of fear of putting yourself out there going to the next level. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. what would you say the fear is of? What is that person? What is that part of you fearful of? <sighs> Being seen. <laughs> yeah. Because what would happen if you're seen? then I'm like, I'm able to reach the people I am hoping to reach. And I'm also putting myself in a space to hear mudslinging. So the more seen and known that I feel and am, the more open I am to all sorts of opinions about about that <laughs> and then feeling like I can't trust myself well am I that way is it true that it's just laziness mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. I guess maybe taking on people's perceptions mm -hmm. instead of like staying with mine and knowing and understanding my reality yeah of what my now, body's been doing and has always done now, this could be connected to, you know, that experience you mentioned, having sexual abuse when you're young. It feels like mm -hmm. you, you're doing a lot of healing on that, but mm -hmm. it also might be a little different. So I want to ask you a question. Where okay. do you feel like you, you became first aware that someone else's words or judgments of you could hurt you? Mm. It's not even that young because <laughs> it's okay. more recent. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Um, oh, yeah, so I keep searching for something farther, but. Something's louder. It's okay. You let's speak to the louder one. You're doing so great. Um. Yeah, my ex-husband told me that I was abusive and manipulative to him. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and insinuated that I might be to my children. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jules. I'm so Which I sorry. think is, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the first time I really like fully 
felt like I lost myself because I took that on. Yeah. And why though? Why did you take that on? (laughs) Because I trusted him more than I trusted myself. Okay. Yeah. I'm so sorry. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. You're doing so good. But you're no longer doing that, are you? You're bringing your trust back to you, aren't you? Yeah. You're trusting yourself again. You're knowing yourself at new levels. You know who you are. You know you're a good person. Yeah. You're so loving. You care so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're doing so good. Now, Jules, if someone's afraid to be seen, why do you think that is? What do you think is underneath? What What are they saying that they're afraid of people seeing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> in my mind I feel like there's a right answer <laughs> it's okay it's okay um this, this but, is part but of it. then my head goes that I am full of love that I love because you you've done so much healing work you have done so much healing work you're very advanced you are full of love now if we're afraid of being seen though are we like if we know that we're full of love and let's look at it differently. So if a little kid is proud of something, what do they do? Run and show me. <laughs> yeah, right? Like they just run up, oh, come look at this, right? Do you, are they afraid of you seeing that? No. Why not? I don't know. Why aren't they afraid of me seeing it? Keep it simple. What do they think about it? Because they like it. They, think they it's like great. it. They think it's great. So mm-hmm. they're like, come see this. This is great. Right? Totally. And there's an element of you that knows that about your music, that knows that about yeah. your work. It's great. Come see this. That's why you have a podcast. <laughs> yeah. But there's something that's underneath that was underneath the surface that was afraid of being seen because it thought something about jewels and something that your ex said hit the insecurity not that Mm -hmm. what he said was true it's what he said hit an insecurity which Mm -hmm. is that jules thought that she was what Mm. a bad person yeah i was raised yeah did sexual abuse happen with people in your family? Um, more of a further family member. Mm-hmm. No. And you feel like it was connected to that? Did Jules decide that that happened because she's a bad person? Where did she decide she was a bad person? Or become afraid of being a bad person? Either one. Yeah. Um. It feels like it ties to my religion growing up. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do it for sure. Yeah. (laughs) Born bad. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Do you mind sharing what religion you had growing up? Mormon. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Are you still in that faith? It's okay. No. Are you? No. I left that right before divorce and remembering sexual abuse and 
<laughs> yeah, you're so incredible. You are such an incredible being. Thank you. Okay. So you learned growing up, not only that you were bad, but you were also really afraid of being bad. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But when you look at, so so how, what's your uh, oldest, do you have daughters? Do you have? Yeah, okay. I have three daughters and a son. Okay. You have three yeah. daughters and a son. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. you have four children. You're <laughs> yeah. amazing. Okay. So your oldest daughter, what's her name? Charlotte. Charlotte. Mm -hmm. so can you recall the first moment that you really held Charlotte and what you thought and felt mm, yes just so much love and awe uh, and beauty and yeah what did you think about her what did you think about Charlotte in that moment mm, just perfect perfect yeah and all of the miracles she is right mm -hmm. I just like couldn't wait to find out who she was. That's so beautiful. That same energy that she's perfect. I can't wait to find out who she is, what she does, who she becomes. Yeah. <laughs> but that same energy of she's perfect. She's so beautiful. She's a miracle. That's who Jules is to and always has been. <sighs> yeah. She's a miracle. She is divine love. Doesn't matter what mistakes she made. Doesn't matter if she screamed at her partner and things got rough for a little bit. It doesn't, it's okay. She's still love. Yeah. She always has been. That's who she really is. I wrote a song 14 years ago that says, I am love and I am free. So try to catch me if you think that I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, no one's ever going to catch you. <laughs> With that, our love, you are free. Oh, I love it. If you have it anywhere, can you share it in the group chat? I'd love to listen to it. I'm sure we all Yeah, do. yes. It's on whatever streaming. Yeah. Well, yeah. like, do you know, are, are you in our community chat, the Telegram group? Um. Yes. Can you share it in there after this? I'd love to yes. uh, be present with you now. You don't have to worry about it now, but I'd love yes, to listen I will. to it. Oh my yeah. gosh, it'll be a special moment <laughs> when we all listen to it. It'll be really special. Because yeah, you are love and you are free. Have you ever been a bad person, no matter what the religion said? Have you ever been bad? No, no. No, 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 no. Have you made mistakes before? Yes. Will you still make mistakes sometimes? Yes, and I hate that, but yes. <laughs> well, you hated that because it reminded you of being yes, bad. Yes, it did. But what yeah. else could mistakes mean? When you know that you're love, what can yeah. mistakes mean? Like, what would you tell your child if they were worried about making a mistake? What would you tell your yeah, child? Yeah, growth. It's growth. Yeah. It's learning. It means we're stretching outside of our comfort zone. We're growing yeah. a little bit, right? So mistakes are learning. They're growth. Yeah. You make them. And it does not mean you're bad because there's no way to be. Yeah. So Jules, right now, I want you to bring all those parts of you that have ever felt that in this moment. Mm. And right now with us, if you can step into a world right now where it's impossible to feel like you're a bad person because you know it isn't true and it never has been. If you can step into a world where you're completely free of that, what world becomes available to you? Just like all, all me. Like I can just be all me and it's okay. Yeah. It's okay to just show up and be all me. <laughs> yes. Let's go. <laughs> yes. It is. not only is it okay but it brings life to other people it brings yeah. healing to other people it brings joy to other people it's a blessing to be all you yeah I want to flip the script on what that I don't want to I don't want to downplay any religions but what Jules made those things mean <laughs> yeah. right so flip the script on that idea that Jules had on herself 
You are a blessing when you are you and you know yeah. that. And now you get to feel yeah. it in the body and live it. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. <sighs> what a special moment. You're a very special person. I appreciate you so, so, so much. That hit my heart. Thank you for saying that. That's not yeah. lost on me. Thank you so much. Yeah. As are you. I see you too. Thank you. It's really <laughs> special. Thank you. Amazing, Jules. I'm so glad you raised your hand. Go live Thank in the you. world. And, 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 and I want to remind you, and I want to remind anyone doing this work, in this moment of freedom, it's so beautiful. We're in it. We can feel it, right? Jules is already saying, thank you, bye. Like she's done. She's like, I'm good. I'm going. I'm going. Yeah. I have stages yeah. to sing on. I have podcasts to record now. I don't have time for this anymore. See ya. Like, she's good. But I also want to remind you and Camilla and anyone doing this work, whether you're doing this work with the workbook that you guys have available to you or watching the mini training, self-reflecting after this call, on this call, I want to remind you guys that this is an ongoing practice absolutely that, that like if other parts of us come in and oh they get afraid now we just know how to guide that version of us it's not subconscious anymore it's not just gonna this is what self-sabotage all that is mm -hmm. is a version of us that's proving the limitation right so mm. that version of us that like like you use the word lazy before. Is it lazy? No, it was just a version of you that was worried that didn't want to be bad. It's like, well, if I get more attention, then they might see this little hidden thing I have here and I don't want to, but that's not true, right? Yes. So now this part of you can just go, it can just create, it can just share. Yes. And if mm. if the other parts show up at all, you just get to guide that part of you with everything you now know. Yeah. Yeah. So I want you to remind yourself of it. Wake up in this world, fall asleep in this world and practice being this. And it lands more and more and more over time. Yeah. Right? So can you do that? Yes, of course. Maybe. Let's go. Keep us updated, Jules. Please okay. share the song in the telegram group. <laughs> I will. Thank you. Thank you. So much you. For sharing. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Awesome. I feel so like I want to um, just like keep going and going tonight. <laughs> I don't want to cut this short. However, they sometimes shut the Wi-Fi off at 11. So like Ginger, I want to bring you up. I want to bring Deb up as well. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, if it pauses at 11 on the dot and we're still working together, Ginger, I'm going to switch to the hotspot. So everyone just like hang out for a second if it just like shuts down for a second because I want to keep going. <laughs> I want to keep going. Do you guys want to keep going? <laughs> I don't want the Wi-Fi to stop us. Okay, Ginger, are you okay with that? Would you be okay with coming on? And we might go a little quicker with you today, um, but we can obviously expand on this. And I know you're amazing and you, you do this work as well. You know this work. So I feel good about working, seeing what we can do in, in 15 minutes together, Ginger. Thank you for raising your hand. <clears throat> yeah, I'm so, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm so I'm so happy to finally be here that this all worked out. And um, I think this might be able to go quickly because I feel like it's fine tuning that I need because I'm so aware um, I I do this work with myself all the time. I I feel like I'm in a really, really, really good place. I just need some clarification because I can just feel that there's like an imbalance, some some resistance in a specific area in my life. So it's with it's with taking action. I feel like there's resistance when it comes to me. Okay, so my work, I'm an independent contractor. So basically I can work as much or as little as I want to. And because I have that option and to me, that feels like freedom and freedom is very important to me. And I love that. But for whatever reason, since I have that choice, I just really don't go to work, even though I want to go to work. I know that that's exactly. beneficial to me. Like it's a, I need to support myself financially in that kind of way. But for whatever reason, I just choose not to, like I, I, I get myself into the place where I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go. I feel good about it. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes down to the moment, I'm just like, 
mm, I would rather not, or I just feel yeah. this resistance. It feels like this like discomfort mm -hmm. and the discomfort becomes so overwhelming that I'm like, never mind, I just won't go. But obviously I'm aware of the consequences of that. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not allowing in the abundance that I know that I deserve to be allowing in. Mm -hmm. And so something that I like pinpointed last night, because I was like, there must be some kind of contradictory belief that yeah. I have, because the conscious part of me knows that this is the right choice and knows that this is going to take me in the direction that I want to go in. But when it comes down to the moment, there's a part of me that's like, no, you don't want to do this. Let's not do this. Let's just stay home. You'll, mm -hmm. You have these things you enjoy doing at home. And mm -hmm. so let's just stay home. So I like kind of talk myself out of it. There's always a reason. There's always yeah, a reason yeah. for me to yeah. like not go. Yeah. So there's something contradicting. You are so on point. You can tell you do this work yeah. with yourself. It's like, like you can tell because you're, you're on point with, okay, there's something contradicting. And I want to bring this to everyone really quick of what Ginger's talking about because, and even just to remind Ginger as well in this moment, because anytime we're doing any behavior, whether it's uh, utilizing food, utilizing alcohol, utilizing not going to work, any type of behavior that we're doing that we consciously know we don't want to be doing, we don't do it because it's, it's, there's something wrong with us. We don't lean into it because we don't have a will, but we don't, that's not why. It's simply because there's something subconsciously going on, some kind of a story, some kind mm -hmm. of identity that's driving us to make the decisions we do. And that's why Ginger said there must be some kind of a contradicting belief going on, right? Contradicting story. So my question for you, Ginger, you said freedom, you said something important. You said freedom is very important to you. And that stuck out to me, right? You said freedom is very important to me. And I know that's something to do with it. There's I, like, yeah. I've identified that, that somehow I'm attaching the idea of not having freedom with going to work. Exactly. But I know that that's not true because I know consciously going to work, allowing abundance is going to give me way more freedom. So it doesn't make sense that not going to work is is actually giving me freedom like yes maybe in the moment because I'm going to get to stay home and I'm going to get to watch the podcast I want to watch or whatever right. like yeah there's that little bit of freedom but I know ultimately that showing that up the in these ways that I want to show up is actually going to give me the true freedom so it's like why does this part of me so resistant to this and believe that it's going to be like be taking my freedom away yeah well what is what is your relationship to work <sighs> What are your stories about work? What do you think like work that is? It's, like that it's something that I have to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I want to tell everyone here's this because this is such life-changing information and it's such a little shift, but a huge shift. Because what happens right now, Ginger, what happens in your body when you think of something you have to do? Yeah, like I want to shut down. Yeah. You mm -hmm. want to shut down. Yeah. And probably not do it. Yeah. If I told you, Ginger, you have to do this right now. What would happen? Yeah, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and it's like, I understand because I, I heard on one of the previous sessions where you're like, tell yourself I get to do this. Yeah. So I've tried that too. Like, it's so interesting because I know this works so well. And I'm like, there just it's must okay. be some kind of missing It's okay. We, we, we're all learning. Like, I know this yeah. works so well too. And I have blind spots at times. Like, we're all learning. And no matter how much we do this work, there's new levels. So I'm happy you raised your hand and that you're giving yourself the grace of getting support, even though you do this work, right? We all have blind spots and we help one another and exponentially grow as we share and allow each other to help one another's blind spots, right? And then I think something else that might be connected with it that like I identified yesterday that I actually wrote down is like this underlying belief that I don't know if I can count on myself to do what I need to do to live the life that I want to live because yeah. that's what it feels. It feels like I'm holding myself back and like I want to show up for myself, mm -hmm. but it's like, this has been such a pattern for so long that it's like, can I do it? Can I show up for myself the way that I want yeah. to show up? Yeah. For that's myself? all a result of the pattern that's been happening, but I, mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, you can, and it's yeah. just questioning because of the consistency, but I want you to remember, I want you to question that and remember this is just happening because there's some kind of an association with work that's making me think I'm going to choose the other thing. 
Yeah. Right. That's making me think it'll take my freedom away, essentially. Mm -hmm. Right. So tell me about what you learned about working growing up. What did you see in your life? And what did you mm -hmm. create stories around work with? What are some stories there? It was tough for my parents. They were really young and my dad started a business early. And so, yeah, there was a lot of a lot of struggle around it, around money and just, um, you know, it was his business. So he had to always show up for it. And he was, he was tired a lot and he didn't get to spend as much time with us as he wanted to. So I'm sure there was a part of little me that was like, Oh, I'm not going that route. Like yeah. I, I, I don't want to give up my freedom and the things that I want, that I enjoy doing and stuff. So maybe there was some kind of protective mechanism where it's like I'm gonna keep myself away from that and also the thing is too is as like this line of work that I'm in right now I know that it's just a bridge because I know that what I really want to do is coaching and stuff and I feel like if I was doing that there would be no resistance but it's just in the meantime where it's like I need to continue to do this thing to support mm -hmm. myself but that's where the resistance comes in when I'm like literally getting ready to go do this thing and it's just like there's so much resistance that I'm just like, I don't know what to do in that moment because it's so uncomfortable. And since I don't have to go, I just come up with some reason yeah. why I'll just yeah. stay and I'll go. Yeah. And you time. don't actually want to do it. Right. That's like <laughs> one of the most important things that you just admitted. You don't really want to do it. You want to do coaching, don't you? Yeah. That's why you're not doing it. Not yeah. because something's wrong with Ginger. I was the worst employee at so many jobs that I did. I was like a genius at like getting out of doing the things, but I'm a freaking great business owner. Yeah. I am great at it because I love what I do and I figure out anything I need to figure out to make this happen. Right? And I know that's where I'm headed, but it's just like in this meantime, it's like I have bills piling meantime, up and stuff. Like I need, I need all to of that. All of that ginger is going to be balanced out. But in this meantime, we are not going to let you tell yourself that like, can I really trust myself? You just don't want to go there. And that's why you're resisting going there. So someone. The interesting honors... thing too, though, is like when I do actually go, I do enjoy myself and I'm always proud of myself at the end of the night. And I always yeah. am like this because in the job that I have, I am able to help people and like communicate with people and stuff, not in the full way that I want to, but I am still able to be a light. Yeah. And stuff. So, so it's like a good happy. bridge for now. Like you yeah, honor it. it. It's is. a good bridge. Okay. So, so I just want to release the resistance so that that's it doesn't what we're feel do. like a struggle to go. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. So one first, admit yourself that this isn't your end be all end all and that you don't want to be doing this forever. Yeah. Like, even though you respect it, it's a great thing. It's very important to, to admit to yourself, this is what I'm building toward. And this is a, a, an, a median. So when there's a part of you that's like, I don't want to go, it's like, well, reminding yourself, this is a bridge. And right now, either we choose to do this or we choose to work on our business. But right now it's time to work. Yeah. Are you following me? But also we want to rewrite these stories that little Ginger created from watching her dad work all the time. Mm -hmm. Because what do you think she decided about work? That work takes your freedom away. It takes yeah. you away from the things that you really want to be doing. Yeah. But what do you know now? That that's not true, that you, you can have it all. Yeah. And right now you have a job that you actually you appreciate and you're proud of yourself mm -hmm. when you do it. But it also is a bridge for you building something that you actually are in love with. And that makes you feel like the most free being in the world because you love what you do. Yeah. So will work take your freedom away? No, it's going to add to my freedom. And are you willing to be responsible at a new level? and grow into the ginger who can show up for this position as a responsibility brand. is a little feels a little sticky to me sometimes mm -hmm. that idea of responsibility and so I'm not sure what is in there either like I don't know maybe it feels like it's all on me kind of thing and that feels like a lot like like yeah. and basically and right like what away, I wrote down that like I don't know if I can do what I need to do to live the life that I want because I know it's nobody else's fault so I guess it's maybe like like just show up for yourself like why can't you give yourself the life that you want to give yourself mm -hmm. yeah it's being hard on you mm -hmm. you get to give yourself so much more grace 
being responsible does not mean being hard on yourself. Yeah. It means just rising to a new level of of commitment to the bigger picture. Yeah. Because right now, if you see the picture of this role right now as like, this is where I'm at and why can't you make a good life for yourself? It's like, oh my gosh, no one would want to show up. It's like, well, if I don't have to go, screw it. I'm just going to make a good life for myself right now and I'm going to listen to the podcast I want. But if you start relating to this, like, okay, I have a bigger picture in mind, right? And this is huge to everyone who wants to start being responsible in new ways and showing up for themselves in new ways, building a beautiful picture that you know that your decisions in the little moments are bridges to bring you to that bigger picture. Second layer is changing your relationship to work, literally guiding that little version of you to let her know, hey, I know you saw a lot with dad, but we can create freedom in work. Work is our expression now. We can be in love with work. Work isn't for us what it was for him, right? For, for me and Ginger, you can take this on. Work is play. Work is service. Work fuels my heart, right? I'm able to do this with everyone because I freaking love being here with you. You know, I love what I do. I could do this all friggin' night when I can, right? And Ginger, you have that in you too. But if you keep making work something that's like you don't want to do and it takes away your freedom, mm -hmm. then even when you have your own business, it would still show up there. So let's create freedom now from that. Yeah. So what else can work be for Ginger? Like you were mentioning before, what else can work be for Ginger? It could be opportunities just to explore more of myself. Yeah. 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 So work for you can be opportunities to explore more of yourself. What else can work be for, for you? It can be play. It can be fun. It can be expansive. Yeah. Enjoyable. Yeah. So what if instead of thinking, what else would I rather be doing right now, which is why you choose to do the podcast, you start to do the podcast, to listen to the podcast you want, right? You gave that example. What if instead of thinking like, what would I rather be doing right now? It's how can I fall in love with going here right now? Because this right now is a bridge to the bigger picture. But I want you to like admit to yourself too, this is the third part, that you're ready for the bigger picture. So funny that you just said you're ready because that's what I was just thinking is there's like this part of me that's always like, you're not ready yet. Like you'll be ready tomorrow. And like, of course, that's- That's, that's why I said it. <laughs> yeah. Because you're ready for it now. Yeah. And the you changing your relationship with work is going to give you that layer of foundation that your spirit needs to know that you've got this and you can just go all in on that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's going to give you that layer of like, oh, I've shown up for this. I've got this. I'm changing my, I'm using this right now to change my relationship with work so it does not come into my own business. Right. Right. I had so many limitations around work and money. In like the first six years of my business, I did like nothing with my business for like six years, right? You're doing it now. You're clearing it now. So Okay, we're back. Amazing. So these are the three layers, right? You're doing this now. You're changing your relationship with work now. And even being responsible, I want you to remember that it's your decision, it's your choice to show up for yourself and fall in love with your life and create a life that you're in love with. That's all that responsibility is. And it's never all on you. I know I'm going quick with these things, but I know you can self-reflect over time. It's never all on you because the entire universe is holding you. It's got your back. 
So even if it might have been all on Ginger in the past and she had resistance toward that or whatever the case, it's never all on you. The entire universe has got your back. So when you hold responsibility, it's like one of those things like, oh, I got this. I'm going to rise through this because I have this bigger picture of the mission I'm here to do that I'm committed to building myself into being the one that does this. Yeah. In this landing. And I can feel it. I know it. Like, I feel like it's like, I'm so close to that breakthrough. Yeah. You're right here. This is a huge part of it. This is the breakthrough. Like this is yeah, the hit. Yeah. Yeah. I just need to like allow myself to like, just to go there, to like not mm -hmm. hold, hold back at all anymore because I know I know all of this and I know that that's where I'm going. And I know that this is like the last little piece and that it's, that I'm ready to let it go. Yeah, just, you are. Yeah, you are. So now the little micro moment thing I want to remind you of is huge because I want you to think about this. What if Ginger got to learn to fall in love with work and make work play? Yeah. What if that became your focus? I can do that. I know I can. Yeah. Yeah. So that becomes the self-talk. How can I fall in love with going here now? How can I make this into play now? Maybe you put on different music. Maybe you wear something different. Maybe your mood is just like at a different level. And you get to remind yourself, I'm always happy once I come out the other side. And this is training for me to be disciplined in my own business. This is a stepping stone. So what if you thought of it like that? Could you play with that? Yeah. Definitely. Amazing. Amazing. So can you play with these little tweaks and keep us updated and let me know how it goes? Let us know how it goes. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like you're so ready. I feel like you could start your business like now if you haven't already. Are you doing it on the side? Um, I kind of do it in many different ways. Yeah, like any ways that it arises for me to help people or to share my message or share my wisdom, I, I definitely do in so many ways. Yeah. 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 And do you want to be coaching? Do you want to be teaching? Where, what, what, where do you see yourself for now? Yeah. Coaching and just like creating content just to, to get awareness out and just to remind people of who they really are like that. I, I just always yeah. consider myself an uplifter and I just love uplifting people and reminding people of who they really are. Amazing. And how would it feel if your whole business and your whole work was that? Beautiful. Amazing. Ideal. Is that what you want? Yeah. Amazing. So I want you to treat the way you're now falling in love with the bridge work you're doing now, right? Going there, showing up for that as that it's training. It's just training to change your relationship with work. And there's going to be a moment where you say, and... I'm done with that training. I'm going all in. I've got this. I feel right? that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I want you to focus on changing your relationship to it and asking yourself the question, how can I fall in love with going here right now? How can I play with it? It's nothing you have to do. And if you don't love, you know how you said you switched it from have to to love. Instead, what I invite you to do is switch it to choose to for now. Yeah. Either I'm choosing to go now or I'm not right? But own the choice. You know what I mean? That's empowerment. That's going to bring your power back to you. So can and you I think do I've that? done so much of that because I used to beat myself up for not going. And now it's like, once I made that choice, I, that's just the choice and I'm good with it. Amazing. But I do want to choose differently. <laughs> yeah. So now yeah. it's time to choose yeah. differently. So now you yeah. get to play with falling in love with the choice of going to work because it doesn't mean what happened with dad. Yeah. That's not what work is for Ginger. She can put that down and that doesn't have to be hers anymore. She can make work something that she loves and that actually gives her freedom and yeah. brings her life. For sure. Thank you so much. Of course, Ginger. Thank you for raising your hand. I'm so glad we got to speak today and keep us updated. I know you said it was tweaks and it was tweaks and it was beautiful yeah. to do these tweaks with you. It was amazing. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Amazing. Beautiful. Thank you, Ginger. Okay. So I'm so glad that my hotspot is like hanging out with this for a moment. 
Um, but I cannot like keep going with it. So I think Deb, would you be able to raise your hand first on next call or just show if you're here, the next call you're at, instead of trying to raise your hand, since we already know that that wasn't the solution, can you um, just let me know that you're present in the chat and I'll bring you up first next round. How about that? Is that good? You can go ahead and unmute if you'd like. Is that good? Amazing. Okay, Deb, we'll work with you in the beginning next round. I don't always keep a list because sometimes it just gets to be too much when we have the list. And I want to make sure that people can just sign on at any moment and know that they can get support. But thank you everyone for hanging out who's here. I see, you know, Lee is here. I see Rosalina. I see August here and Karen. Good to see you, Karen. Um, Eli's here. Amazing. Niels is here. Amy. Amazing. Monica. Camilla is still here. Amber. Anne. Hi, Anne. Oh my goodness. Anne is here from Ticket to Ride. Hi. Thank you for being here. Amazing. All right, beautiful beings. How did tonight go for everyone? How are we doing? Are we feeling the love? Are we feeling the next levels? Do you have some things to take away with you tonight? Thank you all for doing this meditation with us tonight. I would say that it was a once in, like, we we might not do that again, but we might. I don't know. I might be like, let's go, guys. Team gathering. Superheroes assemble. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're, gonna, we're changing the world together right now. We might do it again. But um, next month, we'll be back together. The second, it's always the second Thursday of the month. And we do this every second Thursday of the month. I do want to let you guys know that the Subconscious Freedom Mastermind does start on November 16th. And that's the space where I teach everyone the ins and outs of subconscious work. And you can join it for your own healing, really learn all of the modalities I take people through for your own healing, or you can sign up for the coaches edition and be trained in it. And you also get a business training in the coaches edition, right? Because I want my coaches to be out there making lots of money for the businesses, okay? So it's right now in the early bird for that. So I just want to let you guys know that that's there, that's happening. Um, other than that, keep an eye in the chat. If you guys have any questions about this, have any like little questions, add them into the chat. I'm so happy to voice note with everyone, okay? Uh, and just like share some insights back and, and give you some insights and keep a lookout for the podcasts that come out about all these things. Sometimes I literally make podcasts like for your questions because they're such great questions and I love being able to pour into everyone. So thank you everyone for being here. I hope you have the most beautiful evening and I just appreciate your time. A lot of people hung out here uh, long-term past two hour mark. So thank you. And I hope you guys have the most beautiful night. Okay, everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.